All right, so um, following the recent seizures of two large caches, I will say, of guns and ammunition in Montego Bay, St. James, along with law enforcement's continued thrust against the cocaine trade in the Western City, our guest this morning, Assistant Commissioner of Police uh, Clifford Chambers, is advocating for a sustained multi-agency effort to break uh, both uh, criminal enterprises. He's here on Zoom with us. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Smile. How are morning, you, sir? sir. I'm great, thank you. Good morning, every morning, daily. Good morning to your viewers as well. Yep. Let me say first, congratulations on what you, um, you and your group have done so far in, in finding these. But having said that, my first question, don't we give airlines, airports a hard time for allowing these things to, to go and then plane in our boat in the first place, sir? Don't we give them a hard time to allowing that to reach our shores? Uh, no, no, Neville. Um, Jamaica, as you very well know, is a tourist destination. And so with the traveling experience, there are systems put in place to facilitate the ease at which uh, tourists can come and go. Um, these large cashier has nothing to do with the personal to person travel in the main. And so uh, whilst we have to ensure that uh, there is a very good travel experience by the tourists, we do have systems in place to as you uh, have mentioned just now, to intercept and recover large cache of guns and ammunition which are coming to our shores. On the reverse, however, um, there's also uh, similar activities, initiatives, systems in place to intercept drugs moving from Jamaica, given that, as you know, we're between um, the South and the North, and the largest demand for drugs is in the North. Yep. I understand that, and I don't want to belabor the point, sir, but if every time a, a plane lands in the United States from Jamaica and they find guns and drugs on it, would they not give us a hard time for that, for allowing these things to happen? Not only a hard time. Um, we are a part of an international airport convention, and if this continues over a certain time, then there will be some international sanctions. And so out of that, I'm aware that the agencies relevant are putting things in place to reduce so as the international uh, you know, entities understand that it cannot totally be um, stopped, they understand that uh, the efforts that are being put in place to facilitate its mass reduction, a lot of these, as mentioned, are multi-agency approach. But yes, there are uh, um, sanctions that can be given to the authorities here if this continues. But I do not think we're having so much a problem with um, those going out and being intercepted at the other international ports. Okay. All right. You made some recent major seizures, ACP. What was the kind of support behind the success of that? Uh, the support, um, Delia, is is a multi-agency, which is in, in 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 important. You know, we do have the relationship between the immigrations, um, between the customs between police officers that work directly with customs. And the police officer involvement is, is manifold. We do have investigators um, that work with customs. We do have the, um, the, the, the persons who work inside the, the bonded warehouse where these uh, items are at sometimes. We do have customs who work with the Port Authority. Again, that's another layer of security arrangements. We do have the security arrangements at the airport. We do have external parties, the alcohol, uh, firearm, and tobacco explosive agencies. And we do have um, Homeland Security. I, so it is a collaborative approach um, involving everybody. And we do also have the, the Jamaica Defense Force that covers the, the air and the, the maritime aspect of our surveillance um, network. Yeah, um, I, 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 and that is what is now. Could you think of any other agencies that, that in your mind could also be added to that, that approach that would make it a little bit, uh, I guess, more effective? Or, or as it stands, the multi-agency collaboration is doing what it should do? It is doing what it, it, it is required to do. The interceptions are huge, uh, the fines are heavy. We do have the new firm legislation, which adds a little more teeth. But with regards to your question specifically, I think what we can add is, is you and me and everybody. Um, we have to understand that uh, Jamaica is uh, our country. And if we are considered a, a, a drug and shipment port or a firearm shipment port, then there are sanctions that will impact us and then we'll get the ranking with regards to tourism that will affect us. So as it relates to intelligence, intelligence start with the people who know 
and who pass on that information to law enforcement entities, agencies, as also just about everyone who work at these ports. You do have persons who are not law enforcement, who are not part of the agencies I mentioned just now, who work at these locations. They're from communities. Um, the guns eventually go back to the communities, impact them. For example, in St. James, we have over 91 active gangs. Um, gangs contributed to over 80% of all murders. So they see the mayhem that the firearm is wreaking in their local communities. So we just have to solicit and encourage them to provide what they know to the security architecture that will help us to further intercept um, guns and ammunition coming into our port. ACP, my next question will probably sound like it's a simple thing to do, and I know it's not simple, uh, but I read that there were no arrests um, for those two seizures of uh, the many guns and ammunition. Why? There's no arrest yet, uh, Neville. Our investigation continues. Um, we do have our international agencies that are looking at the investigative leads from where the guns came, and uh, that is creating an issue because there's a a system or a structure where anyone can pack a barrel even from their home and have it delivered. They can ensure that fast compartment is put in and the level of scrutiny that we would expect coming from the shipping country is not really there. It's an issue that has been raised. It's an issue that has been looked into. Now, if you can pack a, a barrel from your home in, in the U.S., from a warehouse in the U.S., from a shop anywhere in the U.S., and then deliver it to a shipping agency. Now, it will come among multiple barrels in a container. And um, though there's a scanning mechanism at the ports, um, sometimes with collusion, as I mentioned earlier on, and uh, you know, other means where people can use financial resources to ensure that necessary scrutiny doesn't take place. But outside of that, if they come cheap by the fraudulent document, it means that locally persons can find ways and means of um, uploading these items and take them to address locations. As it relates to the receiver, I'm aware that the counterterrorism and organized investigative branch are carrying out investigation where these are concerned and um, no arrest is made yet. And I'm sure that they're following leads. But oftentimes you hear persons say, well, why don't allow the shipment to be delivered and, uh, and, uh, and then follow it and make some arrests. I can assure the, um, your listeners, your viewers, that that is also done. And so we are hoping that there will be some major arrests So. All right. Mm. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, what happens? If, so when you find these guns, do you do we have the wherewithal to trace like where the guns themselves uh, came from? Or you don't know which, as you just say, you could do it anywhere in the U.S. and just uh, send it to a shipping company. But you have any idea where it, they, they come from? Yes, we know very well where they came from. We know they come from a country, we know the country, mainly the United States of America. And what our able um, security attache at the embassies here, in, at the embassy here in Jamaica, and the Homeland Security operatives, as also the ATF, what they do is reverse engineering to look at the make, look at where it was manufactured, look at the purchases, and the likely person who it was in their position last and they are out of my, responsible for the shipping. And those investigations are carried out. However, I can't share much with regards to that aspect of what is being done. But sure. yes, we know. And then I also read about ghost guns, which apparently is almost impossible to trace, I'm told. Almost impossible to trace, never. And that is which uh, that would pose a major difficulty for the reverse engineering investigative apparatus. Um, but at least we know where they're coming from. And so that's part and parcel of the investigative structure going forward to ensure that we follow those guns and or intercept them because um, given the nature, it is hard to trace if they should leave our port. So there are those that we would trap, we'd monitor, we'd follow. There are those that would ensure that we confiscate them straight up if they come to our port. And the ghost guns, uh, those are one of those that we don't allow to, to leave our port, even yeah. when they're there. We will see in last April, $88 million worth of cocaine seized, and then um, a British national, $9.5 million worth of cocaine in her luggage. When, when I hear things like that, ACB, I'm curious because I, I, I don't know of Jamaica having that kind of a cocaine drug problem. So is it that we are just a transshipment point to somewhere else? 
yes, we are just a transshipment point to the north, and uh, we are getting better at our interception. Our information is flowing. Our stakeholders have stepped up their game. And so we are seeing these uh, shipments being intercepted. We are seeing arrests um, being made. And it is easier to make these arrests given our local security processes that we do have here at our ports, at our airports, and the monitoring system and mechanism that um, is taking place right now. So yes, transshipment is taking place. Yes, there have been huge recoveries in recent um, time. Okay. And um, based on the kind of feedback we're getting, uh, we know that there are other intent too, but we will continue our fight against the movements of drugs from Jamaica elsewhere and continue with our mass arrest. And again, the narcotics um, division is doing a marvelous job along with their stakeholders where this is concerned. Okay. Congrats again, sir, for what you've done. Um, stay safe and I thank you for your service. God bless you, sir, and thanks thank for speaking you. with us this morning. Um, Assistant Commissioner of Police, uh, Clifford Chambers. Coming up, making a change with Shaquille Henry.